Hi, I'm Mara. And before I dive into my story, please make sure to hit that like and subscribe button for more tales like this one. Things had been looking up for me and Rick. We'd recently celebrated our second wedding anniversary and were thrilled about the baby on the way. Rick had been my rock, and our life together was everything I'd hoped for. But not everyone shared our happiness. Susan, Rick's mom, had been a shadow over our relationship from the start. Her life had been marked by chaos, struggles with alcoholism, and a tendency to push away those closest to her, including Rick. He'd told me stories of his childhood, the neglect he'd suffered, and the emotional manipulations. It was heartbreaking, and despite his efforts to move past it, the scars remained. Our baby's announcement was supposed to be a joyful occasion. We had gathered both families at our place for what was meant to be a celebration. I had prepared everything to perfection, wanting the evening to be just right. As everyone's here, we have some wonderful news, Rick started, his hand squeezing mine under the table. We're expecting a baby! The room erupted into congratulations and excited chatter. That was, until Susan stood, clinking her glass for attention, her timing ever impeccable. Well, while we're all sharing, Susan started, her voice dripping with a sweetness that didn't quite reach her eyes. I, too, have some news. I'm getting married next month. The room shifted focus so swiftly it was almost physical. Susan's fiancé, a man I'd only met once, smiled awkwardly from beside her. The timing of her announcement, right on the heels of ours, felt like a deliberate steal of our thunder. Later, as the evening wound down, Rick pulled me aside his brow furrowed. Do you think she did that on purpose? He whispered, nodding subtly towards Susan, who was basking in the attention of her friends. Knowing Susan, probably, I admitted, feeling a sting of irritation. But let's not let it overshadow our moment. Rick nodded, but the tightness in his expression didn't fade. It's just... I want this to be a happy time for us, Mara, and I feel like she's always trying to worm her way into stealing the spotlight. I know, love. But this is our time, our baby, I reassured him, pulling him into a hug. We'll handle Susan. We always do. As guests started to leave, Susan made a point to come over, her expression schooled into one of forced congeniality. Mara, I hope you know I'm just thrilled about the baby, she said, her voice a tad too enthusiastic. And I hope you'll bring the little one to the wedding. Thanks, Susan. We'll see how things go, I replied keeping my tone neutral despite the churn of unease in my stomach. Her words felt like a veneer over something else, something I couldn't quite put my finger on. After she left, Rick and I cleaned up, the silence between us filled with unspoken worries. It was clear that navigating Susan's involvement in our lives, especially with a baby on the way, was going to be as complicated as ever. As we headed to bed, Rick's last words before turning out the light echoed my own thoughts. We might need to set some boundaries with my mom, Mara, for our kids' sake. And as I nodded in the darkness, the resolve in his voice reassured me. No matter what Susan tried, we would face it together, protecting our growing family. The baby shower was supposed to be a celebration of new life, but with Susan's insistence on being involved, it felt more like a tightrope walk. Despite our rocky relationship, she had been surprisingly eager to help, offering to bring dishes and decorate. Her sudden enthusiasm was both puzzling and alarming. On the day of the shower, Susan arrived early, her arms laden with food and a smile plastered on her face that didn't quite reach her eyes. I just want to make sure today is perfect for you, Mara, she chirped, setting up her dishes on the buffet table. Thanks to her behavior in the past, her kindness felt like a cloak draped over a dagger. Watching her every move, I noticed how she carefully positioned a particular plate of food slightly apart from the others. My suspicions flared when she handed me that specific plate with a grin. I made this especially for you, dear. Remembering all the past manipulations, a cautious plan formed in my mind. I smiled, accepting the plate. But as soon as Susan was distracted, I discreetly switched it with another from the table. As guests filled the room, laughter and chatter creating a festive buzz, Susan eventually served herself and, without realizing, took the plate intended for me. Within minutes of digging in, her expression twisted, and she spat the food back out, rushing towards the bathroom. The room fell into an uncomfortable silence, the sudden drama drawing confused looks. Rick, ever attentive, followed after his mother, concern etching his face. I stayed back, my heart pounding, 
the reality of what might have just happened sinking in. After a tense few minutes, Rick returned alone, his face clouded with anger. She put a ton of salt in that dish, said it was just a harmless prank meant for you. He confessed, barely containing his fury. I can't believe she'd stoop this low. The room was still, the air thick with disbelief. I felt a mix of vindication and horror. Vindication that my instincts had been right, and horror at what could have happened if I hadn't switched the plates. We need to talk, I said to Rick, pulling him aside as our friends murmured amongst themselves, piecing together the scene. This isn't just about today. It's about our future and our child's safety. Rick nodded, the lines of his face hardening. I know. This, this is the last straw. We can't have her in our lives, not like this. It's not safe. We spent the rest of the shower in a blur, our motions automatic. The celebration had been tainted, the joy overshadowed by Susan's actions. As the last guest left, Rick and I sat down, the weight of our decision heavy between us. We'll cut ties. For our baby's sake, Rick decided, his voice firm. I'll handle it. She can't be part of our lives if she's going to be this destructive. Nodding, I felt a sad relief wash over me. This was not how I had envisioned today, but it solidified our resolve to protect our family. Susan had shown her true colors, and we would respond by shielding our little one from any harm, even if it meant severing family ties. It was a painful choice, but necessary. As night fell, we held each other a little tighter, united in our commitment to our family's well-being. In the weeks following the baby shower, the emotional landscape of our home was more tumultuous than serene. Rick and I spent many evenings discussing how to move forward after cutting Susan out of our lives. It was a decision fraught with mixed emotions, not least for Rick, who found himself wrestling with guilt over ostracizing his mother, despite her unforgivable behavior. The challenge wasn't just an emotional one. It had its social ramifications, too. Friends and family had mixed reactions. Some understood our decision, while others couldn't grasp the full extent of Susan's manipulations, suggesting we might have overreacted. She's still your mom, they'd say to Rick, and each reminder was a jab to his already aching conscience. Amid these struggles, Susan began her attempts at reconciliation. She sent messages and left voicemails, her voice soaked in remorse. I'm so sorry, Rick Mara. I don't know what got into me. Please, can we talk? I want to make things right. But each plea from Susan was met with firm resistance. We had made our decision, one born from the necessity of protecting our growing family, and we were determined to stick by it. I can't trust her, Mara, Rick confessed one night as we lay in bed, the soft glow of the moon spilling through our window. Every time I think about letting her back in, I remember the baby shower. What if next time, we don't catch her in time? I know, love, I responded, my hand finding his in the darkness. We're doing what's best for our baby. It's hard, but it's right. As Rick grappled with his emotions, I threw myself into preparations for the baby, decorating the nursery, organizing baby clothes, and attending prenatal classes. Each task was a distraction from the lingering sadness of our familial rift. One afternoon, as I was sorting through baby supplies, Rick came home from work with a troubled look. I saw my aunt today, he began, dropping his keys on the counter. She thinks we should forgive Susan, says she's family. I listened, squeezing his hand. She is family, I agreed, but our first responsibility is to our child's safety and happiness. We can forgive her, maybe, but forgetting isn't safe. Rick nodded, his eyes reflecting the turmoil inside. Yeah. It's just hard, you know? Feeling like I'm choosing between my past and my future. Our baby is our future, Rick. And we're going to make sure it's a safe, happy one, I assured him, pulling him into a hug. As the due date drew nearer, our resolve solidified. The clarity of our purpose, to provide a safe environment for our child, outweighed the complexities of familial obligations. The echo of Susan's pleas faded into the background, overshadowed by the heartbeat of our little one resounding through the ultrasound speaker. That sound, more than anything, reassured us. We were on the right path, creating a space filled with love and security, free from the shadows of past manipulations. As the weeks melted into the final month before our baby's arrival, Rick and I found solace in the little world we had built together. The distance from Susan had initially left a palpable void in our familial interactions, but as we prepared for our new beginning, 
that space filled with deeper connections and shared moments with those who stood by us. We organized small, intimate gatherings with close friends and family who supported our decision. These weren't just casual meetups. They were affirmations of the community we'd chosen, the people who would be part of our child's life in a positive and meaningful way. During one such evening, filled with laughter and stories, I looked around at the glowing faces illuminated by the soft patio lights and felt a profound sense of gratitude. We're really lucky, aren't we? I whispered to Rick as we cleared dishes, the hum of congenial conversation in the background. Yeah, we are, he replied, stealing a quick kiss on my forehead. This is what matters, Mara. These people, you, our baby. This is my family. The nursery became a labor of love. We chose colors and themes together, painting walls and assembling furniture. Each brushstroke and tightened screw seemed to reinforce our bond. As we talked about our hopes and dreams for our child, our voices echoing softly in the room that would soon be filled with new life. In prenatal classes, we learned side by side, Rick's hand often resting on my belly as if trying to connect with our unborn child through touch. We practiced breathing exercises and listened intently to advice from other expectant parents, their stories and experiences weaving into our own tapestry of anticipation and preparation. Yet, in these moments of joy and expectation, the shadow of Susan's absence lingered subtly. It wasn't overt, but a quiet acknowledgement between us that we were doing this on our own terms, without her influence or disruption. This realization wasn't just sad. It was also empowering. It affirmed that our decision to maintain distance was not just about protecting ourselves, but about nurturing a healthy environment for our child. One afternoon, as Rick and I put the finishing touches on the nursery, he stood back, hands on his hips, a soft smile playing on his lips. Look at this, Mara, he said, gesturing around the room. We did this. We're really doing this. I joined him, my hand finding his, and together we looked at the little world we had created. We are, I agreed, feeling a flutter of movement from the baby, as if in agreement. It's strange, isn't it? I continued, leaning my head against his shoulder. How something so small can change so much, make you see what's really important. Rick nodded, his arm wrapping around me. Yeah, it's like, everything else falls away, and it's just us, this family we're building, and I wouldn't have it any other way. The arrival of our baby was nothing short of miraculous. As I held our newborn for the first time, the weight of the tiny body in my arms a tangible symbol of new life. The challenges and the struggles of the past month seemed to dissolve into the background. Rick stood by my side, his face alight with a mixture of awe and joy, his hand gently touching the baby's head. We were parents now, and the reality of that responsibility was both exhilarating and daunting. As we settled into our new routine, the outside world continued to turn, and soon enough, a piece of news reached us that caused a stir of mixed emotions. Susan's fiancé had called off their wedding. The reasons, as relayed by mutual friends, echoed the patterns of the past. Her manipulative and toxic behavior had finally become too much for him to bear. Hearing this, Rick and I exchanged a look of sad acknowledgement. There had been a part of us, perhaps, that hoped Susan would change, find happiness, and maybe even make amends. But it seemed that some patterns were too ingrained to break, and some lessons too late to learn. It's a shame, Rick said quietly one evening as we discussed the news, our baby asleep in the next room. I wish things could have been different for her. I know, I replied, squeezing his hand. But we made the right decision for our family. And seeing what's happened, I'm even more convinced of that. It wasn't just about the peace that had settled over our home since distancing ourselves from Susan, or even the joy that our child brought into our lives. It was the affirmation that we could create a different path, one that broke the cycle of toxicity and allowed for a healthier, happier future. In the weeks that followed, as we adapted to parenthood, our home became a sanctuary. We were more bonded than ever, our priorities clear, and our commitment to each other and our child stronger for the trials we had faced. One afternoon, as Rick and I watched our baby sleeping peacefully, a sense of profound peace settled over me. Do you think we'll ever tell them about all this? I murmured, nodding towards the baby. Rick considered this for a moment, then nodded. When they're old enough to understand, 
It'll be a good lesson on why we choose the people who are in our lives, and why we sometimes have to make tough decisions about those who aren't. I nodded, feeling a surge of love for this man who had stood by me through everything, and for the family we were building. Whatever came our way, I knew we would handle it together, with the same strength and love that had guided us so far. Our story has come to an end, and I hope it resonated with you. Here's a question to consider. Do you think Rick and Mara made the right decision by choosing to cut Susan out of their lives for their child's safety? Or could they have handled it differently to perhaps include Susan in their lives in a limited way? Share your thoughts and experiences in the comments below. We're looking forward to seeing different perspectives on this. And if you enjoyed this story, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Your support helps us bring more stories to life.